I'm an avid traveler, CEO of BuddhaVideos.com, and lifelong student of the martial arts, who strives to know more about the competitors and instructors who are revolutionizing the jiu-jitsu lifestyle. Join me in my journey as I train, learn, and get rolled up. More than just a Paragon black belt under Ricardo Frangia Miller, Jeff Glover is one of the world's most active and decorated competitors. As tricky inside the gi as he is out of it, Jeff's flashy, frenetic fighting style has made him one of our sport's biggest superstars. From age 16, he's been dedicated to becoming one of the best in the business and prides himself on always delivering exciting matches with trademark technique. Today, Jeff and I are stepping off the mats and rolling out into the open to have a little fun, OC Fair style. So Jeff, it's been a little while since I've seen you. How you been? I've been well, I've been well. Just staying out of trouble, trying to stay healthy, uh, stay up on that jiu-jitsu tip. Yeah. Been training for Abu Dhabi? I am. I'm currently training, getting ready for ADCC in, uh, out in England. I'm working on my strength, my conditioning, uh, my mental focus, um, my eating habits, my diet, all that stuff that is needed to be a world champ. Right. Yeah. How's that dieting going? Oh, it's hard, man. I have a hard time because I, I love fried foods and oh. french fries and sodas and all that stuff. So, and, and like ding-dongs and cupcakes from Hostess. Like I love, I'm a Hostess addict. Right. Anything Hostess with like cream in the middle, I just, you know. So I, I've, been, I've, been, I've been good about that though. I haven't had a candy bar in about three hours. Well, I think we're going to wreck your diet today at the fair. Okay. <laughs> I'm down. And later, we're going to spar. Okay. But I'm pretty sure you're going to tap me out. So I'm going to challenge you to a few things in the park that I think maybe I can win. Oh really? Well, we'll see about that. We'll <laughs> right. see about that. We will see. I'm very competitive, man. I don't <laughs> like to lose. So. Jeff, yeah. you may be the master of the darts. I try. But you're not the master of the Moscow Circus. We're going to have a race and see who can get through here faster. Oh, it looks like somebody needs to stretch their hammies, don't they? <laughs> Came down to four seconds, Jeff. My first victory. I'm going to blame the little kids that were in my way that I had to push out of the side out of my uh -huh. way. That's, right. that's why I lost. All right. Well, we'll see. They're going down, though. We still have more challenges. That's yep. not it. No, but I think, I think they're going to get easier for me from here on out. I got, I got some confidence going now. You'll need it. All right. Jeff, I know you like triangles. Do you have any favorite setups? Sure. I would love to show you some of my triangle setups. Cool. Yeah. Um, the first one I'll show you, go ahead and lay on your back like I have you in side control. Um, I like to get it from this, this position here where I have bicep pinned with my shin there and my opposite foot up here and I'll have this kind of control. Okay, I love this position. There's a lot of stuff I do in, in this position. Like one of my favorite things to do is just this forearm press choke. What happens is I press my forearm and you turn your head, right? They always turn their head in. So once they turn their head in is I, whiv I swivel my arm down so the back of my hand gets Jake's cheek Okay, now I push him all the way across and swivel this back in. And now you press down and you get a tap. It's one of my favorite ways to choke guys from here. Okay, the other thing I'll do, if their head is so far down that I can't really get in there, is I, as I grab here, okay? 
I, I come under hook his head here, okay? Now I'm gonna lift it, throw this leg in, and loop this leg over, okay? Now I have two options that I do from here. Reverse triangle, which is here, and squeeze till they tap, boom, right? Or, as I get up into my mounted triangle, and again, you squeeze till they tap, right? I love this setup, you know, I always set it up from side control, well, I pass the guy's guard, get him in side control, and then what I do is I go pin, windshield wiper, switch. You see that again, right? Is I'll have his arm out here exposed. You can even reach back here, push his bicep down so that you can pin, okay? Then I go windshield wiper. See how that looks like a windshield wiper? Windshield wiper to switch. So now I have Jake's um, arm pinned with my, my ankle here, right? So the next step, I obviously have this underhook over here. My right arm is gonna grab the back of, of Jake's head here. Now I'm gonna lift it up. As I fall onto my right side, I change my whole angle here. I throw this leg under Jake's head and I fall onto my right shoulder. Lift this and I go, boom, all the way to my right shoulder. So that now this left leg, look what this left leg does, goes boom. And this is where we have our options now of which kind of triangle do you wanna finish? Do I wanna go? Reverse triangle, or do I want to go mounted triangle? Oh, okay. That's a good setup. Oh, I love that setup. All right, Jeff, it's 1 0. I'm in the lead. We got the second challenge right here with the hammer. I think uh, I might win this one. Uh, you're going down. I've been bench pressing. <laughs> Let's see. What other triangle setup you like, Jeff? Okay, um, another triangle setup I like to do, it actually was the, uh, the beginning steps of that last triangle we were drilling. Mm -hmm. um, let me show it to you. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, lay down here, side control. So, so the way I developed this triangle was from knee belly, okay? And what I was doing was um, I would catch, the guy would sometimes have this arm like down here in between my legs and it might not, might not necessarily be hugging anything or grabbing anything. I just noticed it was in between my legs there. And anytime I have an arm in between my legs, I'm thinking triangle. Mm -hmm. So I find myself in knee belly and the arm would be down in here. So what I would do is go elbow, back of the head and lift everything so that I can go boom. Okay, I throw that leg in there. Now you'll see that I also shifted and posted all my weight into my right hand. It's really important that you get that down. At which point now you can boom. Pull that bad boy in, lock it up, and get the finish. Another one of those really cool looking like pouncing attack triangles, mm -hmm. okay? So the idea is to go knee belly, back of the head, back of the tricep, lift it all up as I throw this leg in. Boom, okay? Remember I said that you also have to fold your hand here. Okay, that's an important detail that a lot of students, when I first teach this to them, they forget that. Mm. So it's the hand that's holding the back of the head will release after the, the leg gets behind his head, my hand will release and I'll post on the ground. So I'll have knee belly position. I'm gonna go boom, post. Okay, now my left foot will come over. I'll stuff his elbow into place, grab my shin and start adjusting into that mounted triangle. Okay, and then obviously I'll squeeze from here. Arm locks, wrist locks, um, hold the nose so they can't breathe. Lots of different things you can do from here. You want to try it, Jakey? Sure. I'll 
Okay, so it's a knee belly. All right, and now it's gonna be this hand will grab here, mm -hmm. and this one will grab the back of my head, mm -hmm. and you're gonna throw that leg in, and you're actually be like, here. You try not to fall on this one. Okay. You stay here. Now that you post it on your hand, very good. Your hand can grab this shin, pull it up into place. Go ahead, lock it up, <laughs> and then squeeze. Nice. Yeah, it's a funny feeling. I feel like I'm just thrusting, thrusting it's my all, hips it, in your Yeah, it feels face. like you're gonna hurt the guy. Yeah. But it's actually, the contact isn't that violent. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not really, it looks like it would be, but it doesn't hurt that much. Right. right. So knee belly. And when you grab this, it's not an underhook, it's gotta be like an overhook. Oh, okay. If you have it here, it's a little different. Mm. If their arm is outside here, right. Right, it wouldn't work as well. We're looking for just right there. And then the back of the head, lift it up, boom. And now make all the adjustments, getting closer, grab your shin, get this foot across my belly, good. Fuck it in. That's good. Oh. I like that. I wouldn't have thought of being able to attack so quickly from that position. Yeah. Again, it's, you know, a lot of my moves are based around how cool does it look? You know what I'm saying? If there was, if there was 200 people watching, would they all, would they all be bored with it? Or would they be like, oh wow, that was amazing. I'm always looking to get the crowd in on my fights with me as well. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm always looking for cool dynamic moves that catch the eye and will catch the attention of somebody all the way across the other side of the auditorium. They're like, whoa, who's that little white guy over there doing all those crazy moves? Well, that's me. And those are triangles I'm showing. All right, Jeff, it's two to one, your lead. That's right. Let's, do, let's get away from the games for a while and go back to the food. Barbecue corn on the cob. Okay. Let's see who can eat one faster. Well, looking at your belly, it looks like you're gonna win this one. All right. <laughs> you ready? Set. Go. Not done. <laughs> Four, three, one. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. That was close. Ah, I was cheating too. <laughs> yeah, this corn is good. I was cheating, you still beat me. <laughs> All right, Jeff, we're tied 2-2. Two, two. Next is the beer challenge. Okay. Got a Belgian white ale here. Okay. The winner is the person who downs it completely. I would just like to say, this is not my official training for Abu Dhabi, okay? This is like outside, okay? We're like, I'm gonna be back to training after this, guys. Don't think, you know, that's what I do daily. You're gonna throw up later, right? I might, I might puke. Ready? <laughs> Glover's about to win. Jake don't like it. Look, he's hey, cheating. What, what was your last match? I lost that match. How dare you bring that up? Glover three, Budo one. I lost that one bad. No, Budo has two. Uh -huh. I have three. Can you imagine what your life would be like if you didn't have jiu-jitsu? You know, uh, I've been asked that before, and the crazy thing is I actually can imagine my life without jiu-jitsu, and the image that comes to my brain is a very miserable one. Very unhealthy, unconfident, um, insecure person is what I'm visualizing without jiu-jitsu in my life. Jiu-jitsu uh, in the past 12 years has been my my rock as far as like my stability with my life, with my money, my my security, uh, physical, um, just the way I talk to people. You know, it's like Hicks and Gracie said back in, in his old movie, Choke. He says, taking jiu-jitsu away from me is worse than cutting off my legs. Right. You know? I know you've learned a lot in your jiu-jitsu career. If you could go back 12 years ago and give yourself some advice, what would that be? 
gosh, if I could go back 12 years and talk to that first, that Jeff Glover 12 years ago and tell him something, it would be, hang in there, man. Hang in there. Don't you quit. There's a, there's gold at the end of that rainbow. You know? Um, it's just because in the beginning, it was, it was quite frustrating. You know, the first year and a half of jiu-jitsu was just butt-kicking after butt-kicking after butt-kicking after butt-kicking. Um, and there was times when I wanted to quit. But luckily I had Frangia there for me to constantly encourage me and give me positive uh, reinforcement and motivation to let me know that, you know, everyone everyone starts at white belt. Even the best black belt that you know and that you can see, the world champion right now, the best guy in the world, started as a white belt too. So it comes down to persistence. That's a big part of it. You know, consistency is, is a huge thing in jiu-jitsu. You need to be consistent. Um, just keeping jiu-jitsu a part of my life every day I don't know, you know, it's, it's, it's like I said, it's hard to imagine my life without jiu-jitsu. I, I mean, I couldn't imagine my day-to-day -day life without having that outlet of, of being able to go and have combat with some other guy. The chance that he might choke me, I might choke him, I don't know. I just can't picture life without that. <laughs> it's hard. So what motivates you these days? Well, today I'm motivated by my competition. You know, uh, there's a lot of really good uh, jiu-jitsu fighters at my weight class today that are doing a lot of awesome things and I want to stay up on the level with them so that keeps me motivated to keep going as well as the people in my life my family my friends you know encourage me uh, give me positive reinforcement all the time make you know make me feel like what I'm doing is worthwhile and just you know um, the people closest to me are uh, you know my best friends my girl my my mom my dad you know they're the people in my life that keep me motivated you travel around to a lot of different academies training, yes. especially Cobra Kai. I've done that a few times. How important is that to get out of your home academy and, and learn from other people? Yeah. In my travels, I've learned a lot more than I ever would have had I just stayed at my original academy. Um, now, with Frangia in my corner, I was able to grow and learn a lot because he was so willing for me to go outside of his knowledge and learn from someone else. So when I went to Cobra Kai and trained with those guys, I had 100% support from him. Um, and it was just, it, it made my game expand so much to get a different perspective, a different point of view. Somebody else's opinion on Jiu-Jitsu than my original instructor, which whose opinion I take as gold. Don't get me wrong, I take as gold, but I'm not close-minded to others' opinions of Jiu-Jitsu. So what would you think if somebody... Somebody out there has a coach that says, you know what, you don't need to go anywhere else. You get everything from us. I would say that's a close-minded coach. Um, of course, I probably don't know the guy personally, so I couldn't tell you, you know, but... You know, I just I just think there's too many people involved in jiu-jitsu to just take one person's point of view from it. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna hurt yourself eventually. Uh, you're gonna stagnate your growth in jiu-jitsu if you limit yourself to one person's opinion. That's the cool thing about the art, right? There's so many different perspectives, yeah. so many different things you can you can train. Yeah. You can specialize in one aspect of it if you want to. Yeah. It's really, really, uh, you have a lot of freedom, right? Absolutely. There's, and, and you and I talked about this earlier, how you we have Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but if you watch me and Bill Cooper compete, you're like, whoa, those are two completely different styles. You can have different styles in the same martial art. And I think that's limited to jiu-jitsu. I'm not sure if other martial arts allow the uh, flexibility for individual growth uh, as well as jiu-jitsu does. But it's an art, right? It's a martial art. So it's the art, art signifies personal expression, right? So you should be able to express yourself through the art. I always think about that my opponent is a canvas. You're like some canvas I'm about to draw a painting on. And the painting is going to be a picture of combat. And the picture of the combat is always going to be me winning. So I picture my opponent as my canvas that I'm going to draw my art on. My art is physical combat. My art is jiu-jitsu. My art is you choking or your arm bending. It is what it is. It's an art. It may be a brutal art, but it's an art nonetheless. And it can be, it can be uh, different from individual to individual. It can change. Your style is probably a lot different than mine. And that's awesome. I love that about jiu-jitsu, that it's not all the same. I know lots of other martial arts have uh, curriculums and katas that you have to learn and you can't change that. But in jiu-jitsu, you have a lot of freedom to, to change and alter the moves to your preference and your body type and your flexibility. Right. You know? 
So we all know that you're great at darces, deep half guard. You're very well, well rounded. But what's one thing that you're not good at? Your technique you learn and then you suck at, and you just don't get it. Uh, you know, I've, I've always said for years that judo is is one of the toughest things to learn. Um, I mean, I, I consider myself pretty tough, man. I've been doing jiu-jitsu 12 years now. Um, and to this day, I still find the judo training extremely difficult and just, uh, it's just really like physically demanding on my body. Um, like going, going like judo, judo takedowns is just really, I don't know, I've had a hard time with that. Like my personal style is, uh, as far as takedowns go, is I've developed a wrestling style. Single legs, double legs, as opposed to the Ipones, you know, the Koshigarumas and stuff like that. I just always found the judo to be a little difficult. How about on the ground? On the ground, I don't really have too many problems. Um, you know, uh, early in my jiu-jitsu career, I was shunned away from the leg locks because that's kind of how it is in traditional Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You're not really supposed to do leg locks. They don't want you doing leg locks. Um, so at first, when I first started doing leg locks, I was kind of naive, um, a little uncoordinated, a little uncomfortable with them. But I'm pretty comfortable with the leg locks now. You know, we're talking like seven, eight years ago. Yeah. So I've had seven, eight years to work on and improve my, my footlock game. But at first, I found that pretty uh, complicated and difficult. But obviously, things have changed. Right. I'll heel hook you. Right. I'll, I'll take that heel home with me. I will break your leg off, take it home with me as a souvenir, dip it in gold, and put it up your little booty on my mantle as a representation of my footlock skills. So if you could take a private lesson from anybody in the world? Hicks and Gracie. And what would you ask him? Gosh, man, I don't know. I just, I wouldn't ask him anything. I would just let him talk, I don't know. I, Hicks and Gracie or Jean-Jacques Machado. Those are the two guys that I really looked up to a lot in the early stages of my jiu-jitsu. Uh, Hicks and Jean-Jacques, I don't know, who else would I do a private class with? I might try to bring somebody back from the dead and do a private class with them zombie style, like a like a zombie Carlson Gracie private class. That would be awesome. Or, uh, you know that old, that guy who started jiu-jitsu in Brazil, that Count Coma guy? Yeah. I would like to get that guy's opinion on everything. Yeah. I mean, he's dead and all, but, you know. If you were able to meet Conde Coma, what would you ask him? Gosh, I would say, what do you know about the triangle? Probably didn't know much. He'd probably say, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> but I'll Ipone say Onagi the out of you. Right. So to your to your white belt students, what's the first lesson you give them? How to tap out. First thing I tell them is you do not tap the ground or the mat. You tap your opponent so that they'll let go of your arm and they feel it. That's an important lesson uh, that I think gets skipped over in a lot of academies that don't stress the urgency of tapping out and preserving your joints. Right. A lot of places will, well, uh, the teacher will allow their students to get their shoulders ripped on and say, don't you tap, don't you tap. My whole thing is like, conserve your body, dude. Tap out and you'll be more prepared next time rather than being hurt and just letting yourself get your shoulder ripped. Right. You know, I think that uh, is oftentimes kind of skipped over in beginner's curriculum. Is teaching the guy, you know, people get too caught up in teaching their students how to attack, um, whereas I like to teach my students how to not get hurt. Right. You mentioned before about how much there is to learn in Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Such a big canvas of art to learn. Yeah. What's one thing you've learned recently? Um, well, recently, um, the things I've been adding to my game have been Judo and wrestling. Um, as far as jiu-jitsu and leg locks, I'm pretty secure with all that. Uh, I do a lot of research and studying online of other guys in my weight class and other guys in the jiu-jitsu community, what kind of guards and styles they're doing, and I'm pretty up-to-date on most of that. Um, so personally, I've been trying to like incorporate as into my game, like new things into my game is my judo takedowns and my wrestling uh, techniques and takedowns. There's a lot of stuff that I've learned from wrestling that doesn't necessarily apply to the takedown but you can use on the ground in different scrambles. Um, a lot of wrestling stuff will get you choked out but there's some things you can pick and choose from uh, from the wrestling game that can really be beneficial to you that can really help you in scrambles um, in those you know from the ground to the feet type situations so you know if I had to tell you one thing that I've added to my game recently it's gonna be 
you know, like wrestling um, funk rolls, Grammy rolls, um, Iranian takedowns, um, low single leg takedowns I've been working on. Um, just mostly, you know, trying to trying to improve my 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 takedown game. So you don't think jujitsu is enough? I do not, absolutely not think jujitsu is enough. I think today that you need to have. There's mixed martial arts. I, I I like to think of it as mixed grappling arts. MGA, mixed grappling arts. Judo, sambo, wrestling, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, catch wrestling. What else is there? Greco-Roman wrestling. You know, I try to incorporate all that stuff into my game. I like to have a, like I said, a mixed grappling style. Jeff was trying to dart me in there. Never again. Where's the nearest trash can? All right, Jeff, it's 3-2, you're in the lead. I think I have an edge on the eating competition, so here we go, Dipping Dots Challenge. Let me just say, before we begin, I'm gonna go ahead and acknowledge that this might be slightly unhealthy. <laughs> but we're gonna do it anyway. Let's do it. Okay, go. Oh my God, bro, how are you gonna do this? Hey, if that doesn't take me 20 minutes, man. I'm gonna win this bitch, that's awesome. <laughs> Okay, man. I'm going my best. Budo Jake has some amazing skills that the world needs to know about. Eating skills. Huh? Like eating ice cream and corn for heaven's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't even look like you started. Oh yeah, get every last yeah. morsel. Look at that. The score may be tied, but there's more competition to come. Jeff, you got one more? Absolutely. Um, can I show you like a more basic type of triangle? Sure. Yeah, for like beginners more. So go ahead and put me in side control. It's one of my favorite triangles, okay? I, I like to think that um, the act of recomposing guard can be attack, not just a way to, uh, to get back off of the defense, okay? I, I see the, the recompose as, a, as an option or a way to set up different chokes and arm locks and omoplatas. So what happens is I'll find myself here in, in side control and I'm gonna get this frame on the throat and this frame on the hip, okay? At which point I'll move my hips out and I'm gonna move you down. You see how my hands here, Jake? I can frame mm -hmm. on here and here and actually like move you towards my legs. Mm -hmm. So I, my arms push you towards my legs as my legs come up and in, okay? So here, I gotta have the frames obviously, the frame on the throat the frame on the hip, a little hip escape, right? And now I push you in as my legs come out, or as they come up, mm -hmm. all right? Now the next step, the hand that's on the hip is gonna come in and go to bicep, okay? And then I'm gonna go this guy down into your back so that the other one can come out, all right? And now I'm gonna lock, reach across, get the arm across, try to pull my leg down across your head, an important detail that I, I tell all my students is it's not called the try in front of the guy, it's called the try angle. So if you can take your triangle when you're in front of the guy, hold your shin, have your foot on his hips, and get an angle, now you're living up to the name of triangle. Go ahead, lock it up, and it works a lot easier here compared to here. This doesn't even choke him, right? That's not really doing much, but when I take the angle on the triangle, oh, I don't even have to use my hands to squeeze and get the tap. Yeah, totally. Right. So watch this again, side control. I love recomposing guard as an attack. I just, it, it sets up omoplatas, triangles, arm bars. Again, here and here. Hip scoot. My hands are pushing him down as my knees are coming up and in. This guy will push down into his back so that this guy can come to the bicep and slip my other leg out. Okay, so now I have his arm and his head trapped in between my legs. Next step is adjust the triangle, finish it up. We're gonna reach across, get Jake's arm. Boom, take that bad boy over there, foot to the hip, hand to the shin. Okay, and this is that angle part I was talking about. You have to get the triangle. So we're going down this way, down this way. Boom, all right, now I can lock it up and it's pretty easy. Squeeze, get the tap, all right. Jeff, we gotta have a clear winner today. It's tied three to three. How are your wall climbing skills? Well, let me just say, uh, this isn't no cup of ice cream. So, yeah. So you think you can climb fast? 
I think um, I would say you're going down, but you're going to be coming up with me. So let's just say I'm going to be going up faster. Let's see. Good job. All right, go! Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. Still beat him, come on, go and do it, you do it! Oh, yeah. oh you suck, go! Jeff, that wasn't even close. You know what, Jake? I, I missed my first grip, okay? I, I don't know what to say. I, I'm embarrassed I lost, man. I thought gripping was a part of jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I thought so too, okay? I'm just gonna say that the beer challenge might have impaired this one, okay? <laughs> Let's just put it, or maybe even the ice cream challenge. I don't know. You do realize that was the tiebreaker, right? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yes, I beat Jeff Glover. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little disappointed, but I'm glad that you jujitsu fans get to see all this stuff that went down today. Budo Jake, the legacy of Budo Jake begins and starts right now. He's the champion of the day. I'll accept defeat, it is what it is. I've lost before, I'll lose again. I'm not gonna be a sword learner, loser. Budo Jake's the winner. Now after this, we're going back to the studio, right? Oh yeah, I'm gonna choke you. Yeah. <laughs> You gonna get your revenge on the mat? Yeah, that's, there's a little bit of that to come. I'll give that to you. As long as I can win at the fair, that's all that matters to me. Udo Jake, what can I say? The guy's a champ. We're back on the mats, and now it's time for Jeff to get his revenge. Just before the filming of this show, we shot an instructional with Jeff all in Darce chokes. Jeff has a dangerous Darce and I was doing my best to defend it. Here we have that angle on the triangle that Jeff was talking about earlier. Here's where you're going to see a beautiful acrobatic omoplata escape. Here's one I should have seen coming, Jeff's triangle from the neon belly. I showed you that one. <laughs> the one we just went over.
And here's one of the coolest moments of our role. Watch Jeff's back take from side control. Jeff pulled off two knee bars at the 2011 ADCC trials, and here I get to be on the receiving end. Jake, baby. Awesome. Ah. Rolled up, baby. Budo Jake in the house. Well, Jeff, we had a fun day. I got the championship of the uh, of the Orange County Fair. Yeah. You got the uh, the win on the mats. So I'd say we're about even. You know, it kind of worked out the way things you would think would work out. I win on the mats. You win with all the eating stuff. No, I, did. I thought you would win on the on the wall climb. Yeah, I lost the wall climb. Uh, I'm a little embarrassed about that. I kind of wish you didn't bring that up. Thanks for the day, Jeff. Thank you, Jake. The opportunity to train alongside an athlete with the goods that Glover's got is a lot like the fair itself. So much great stuff, but it doesn't come around often. So when it does, you'd be crazy to miss out. On the next episode of Rolled Up, I take a drive down to sunny San Diego to spend the day with seven-time world champion Andre Galval. We discuss the success of Team Atos, the importance of drilling, and the role of Christianity in his life. After taking part in Andre's group class, I ask him to show me some of his strongest sweeps and submissions from the closed guard. And then we end the day with me getting Rolled Up. <laughs>